Figuring out the best data to download from the Hubble Legacy Archive can seem a bit confusing at first. There are many different types of images, and oftentimes they can have weird shapes. You can browse through the images to see if there are any complete images, such as this set here, where the galaxy is completely covered in the entire photo. Or you can use the file names to guide you on the type of image to download. In this case here, these two files, HST0596201 WFPC2 F439W, appear the same. However, this one ends in PC, and this one here ends in WF. This is from an older data set using the Wide Field Planetary Camera 2 that is no longer on the Hubble Space Telescope. They fit together because the planetary camera image here actually fits into this wide field image right here. The file name itself contains all of the information about the image. HST stands for Hubble Space Telescope. 05962 is the proposal that was used to capture these images. 01 stands for the number in the data set. There could be multiple images of the same image that are labeled 01, 02, 03, and so on. WFPC2 stands for Wide Field Planetary Camera 2. Whatever type of camera was used to take the image will be in that area. And F439W is the filter that was used to capture the image. In this case, it is more in the blue-violet range for visible light. And PC stands for Planetary Camera. WF stands for Wide Field. In order to see the proposal that was associated with these images, click the More button in the lower right-hand corner and select Information for HST Observing Program 5962. This will take you to the proposal that was used to capture this image. The original data associated with this proposal is down near the bottom. Each individual image is linked here and can also be previewed. However, the data from the proposals themselves do not often contain the clean data that is presented in the Hubble Legacy Archive. It also provides the date that this image was taken. In this case, it was taken on January 20th, 1996. Scrolling down to find a more complete data set, we have proposal 10188, which provides an entire clean image taken with the ACS wide field camera, so the advanced camera for surveys that is currently on the Hubble Space Telescope. This proposal was imaged in February 11th, 2005. So not only is it more recent data, but it has a much nicer, more clear image as well. Another example would be to check out the Whirlpool Galaxy and see if we can find anything cool. Immediately, the first few rows of images show this message, local variable ext list referenced before assignment. I'm assuming that this is some type of error and it has only recently popped up in the Hubble Legacy Archive as I have not seen it in the past few months. Unfortunately, that means that some of the images that were in those files are no longer available. In this case, the Whirlpool Galaxy did contain a mosaic. There are a bunch of different images of the Whirlpool Galaxy that do not com contain the complete galaxy. So you might get lucky with a Google search. Rather than trying to piece together these images and create your own mosaic, in the case of the Whirlpool Galaxy, it does have a complete mosaic online in a separate site. Simply by looking up the Whirlpool Galaxy Hubble Heritage Mosaic led me to this site. By going down to Downloadable Fits Files, I now have the full mosaic files to download and process for this galaxy. It comes in the 435, 555, 814, and 658 filter wavelengths. 
Another object that I have searched for is NGC 6326, which is a planetary nebula. There are two sets in this data set, as there are not a lot of images of this nebula itself. Scrolling through the data, you can see the first data set and the second data set here. The first data set contains 502, 555, and 658 filter wavelengths. And it also appears to have two separate images. But because the planetary nebula is so small, it fits perfectly in the planetary camera tile that is in the second step here. For the second one, proposal 8773, it only has the 502 and 658 filter wavelengths. And again, because that planetary nebula is so small, it fits perfectly into the planetary camera. Because this nebula fits perfectly in the planetary camera, you could simply download those files themselves and process that. The wide field contains a lot of extra information that is not really needed as the image is so small. Furthermore, the Proposal 7501 dataset contains three filters that are easily assignable to red, green, and blue. Whereas the Proposal 8773 datasets contain only two filters where you have to then use one filter twice to create a red, green, and blue image, or create a synthetic green channel from these two filters or even just colorize only two filters themselves. Although NGC 6326 does fit in the planetary camera image itself, you can also see here in this colorized image that there is a little bit of extra nebulosity going past just the planetary camera tile. So you can just choose to download the planetary camera image itself and have that little bit of nebulosity just out of frame and not in your image. Or you can download the entire wide field image and just crop this in order to get that extra nebulosity. So while the Hubble Legacy Archive might have a bunch of different types of images that might not at all seem intuitive on how to process or download, just experiment, download different things, check them out, see what they look like, and figure out what you would like to process 